Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Eris Katz. I'm Lucena's CEO um, and co-founder. Today, we're going to go over Tiebreaker, a market-neutral strategy using layered research. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, just logistically, uh, if you guys see the webinar, the GoToWebinar panel, if you have any questions, please post them throughout the presentation. We'll try and address them at the end of the presentation the best that we can. This is about a 30 minutes to 45 minutes max. And I appreciate you guys uh, joining us and taking uh, the time this afternoon to join me on this presentation. Uh, before we get started, just to kind of cover some of the uh, disclaimer, uh, Lucena is a technology company. We're not a uh, professional and certified financial advisor. Uh, we're not an advisory firm and we do not recommend or solicit the purchase of any or sale of any security or stock. Uh, investing in the stock market is a risky business and may not be suitable to all investors. Let's see, all information presented here are hypothetical in nature and are based on back tests and simulations. Uh, historical performance does not guarantee any future results. And uh, we don't guarantee the accuracy of the data and the information that's presented here as well, as we are relying on third-party data and faulty data can obviously translate into some of the overall research continuum. Okay, uh, before we get into the details of Tiebreaker, I'd like to uh, just kind of give you an overview of what Lucena's offerings are and where Tiebreaker kind of positioned within the offerings. So as you know, we are a technology company, we provide statistical forecasting capabilities based on big data analytics. Um, our core platform contains five modules. It's Quantdesk. I'm going to hopefully have time to present some of those underlying technologies within Quantdesk. Um, many of our customers ask us to provide um, more of a big product beyond Quantdesk. Quantdesk is just more of a research tool to allows, that allows people to essentially uh, drive uh, hypotheses and validate them through an online cloud-based technology tool. The uh, Alpha Templates is a second tier where we provide cu our customers some of our research data. We provide it in two, fa in two fashions. One is uh, a data feed, um, and the other one is uh, qualified event study sharing. Uh, the third level, which is uh, where Tiebreaker uh, belongs to, is truly delivering uh, model portfolio strategies. These are highly researched and tested strategies that we feel are compelling enough to provide as a model portfolio. We provide the actual simulation of trades in a forward, forward-looking uh, testing environment, essentially <clears throat> as if we were trading them uh, live and uh, allow customers to view what we're doing and essentially make decisions based on what the findings are and uh, our technologies uh, provide. The fourth level is Quant for Hire, which is more of a custom service-based professional services for uh, anything that is not included in the first three levels. But the whole notion of Lucena is to provide a scientifically validated and uh, machine-backed, uh, machine learning-backed approach to investment strategies. Okay, uh, let's uh, jump into tiebreaker. So. Tiebreaker is really predicated on three uh, main continuums or main disciplines within Lucena's offerings. It is a layered ap approach to applying forecasting uh, for long and short positions and for a market neutral strategy. Uh, we're gonna go over the following disciplines, uh, the scanning of a qualified list of equity, equity basket, uh, a machine learning based forecaster and uh, applying mean variance optimization 
uh, for beta neutrality. And I'm going to discuss all of these things today. Just as a refresher, how Lucena's forecaster work, it is really a two-step process. We identify the best indicators. These are a set of, or a compilation of multiple indicators that are driven from a genetic algorithm that we run every, every weekend and identify which indicators out of 350 or so that we have are more predictive for the S&P 500 for the following week. And uh, these indicators are basically a composition of uh, technical, fundamental, and some proprietary indicators all grouped together uh, in some sort of con configuration that the machine identified as most predictive through its process that it's doing every weekend. It's a very long process. We use and we apply, again, genetic algorithm to identify the 10 to 15 out of the 350 that are going to be used for the S&P 500 for the most part. Uh, for the following week or the following time frame. So we identify the best indicators, and then we apply a forecast on the S&P 500. You can see on the uh, table just below. And we select the most suitable securities or equities based on the following factors. We look at the current price and the forecast price. There's a dollar uh, change forecasted as well as well as percent uh, change that the machine is forecasting. And we apply some sort of a confidence measure, and it's depicted here with a yellow stars and blue stars approach. Behind the scene, what actually happens, the machine takes a snapshot of any of these securities and decides how uh, it stands as it relates to these indicators. It goes back for the look back period and identifies the security or other similar securities that have similar behavior and what happened to those securities from the time that they found a close match to what it is today. Based on the analysis of that statistical analysis, it identifies the predictive behavior of, of the price change. And of course, the wider the sample data, the less confidence we have, the, most, the more narrow the standard deviation of the possible outcomes from the historical analysis, we provide a higher degree of confidence. So that's, that's kind of how, how it works. We use something called KNN, which is K nearest neighbor. It's a machine learning algorithmic approach to identify these matches historically. And, and that works pretty well. You know, if we look at some back tests, simulations, and again, this is all through back testing, you can see, for example, here in this screen, uh, I've taken in a, a, a back test from uh, January 1st, 2011 through, uh, through uh, current present time and uh, compared uh, to a benchmark, S&P uh, total return. And essentially what I've done here is I've selected the top 10 positions every week and uh, went long with those 10 positions and compared the overall results. So I basically, I go back uh, look back historically at uh, KNN every Tuesday and identify the most uh, predictive and the highest return stocks for the following week. I buy them on Tuesday, wait a week, close all the positions and repeat. And I've done this basically through the simulation from January 1st, 2011, all the way to uh, 2014. Uh, you can see that the orange line represents uh, our strategy. Uh, the blue line is the S&P total return, which, as you know, has, has been on a pretty nice upwards trajectory for the last few years. And we can uh, show through, again, this simulation that we have outperformed on the total return, on the sharp ratio, and on the max drawdown using this technique. Now, this is not to say that this is what you would expect um, to happen in real, real life. There, there are obviously many factors that go into real trading, such as uh, market impact, such as transaction cost. We try to do our best to identify some of these factors, but these are just guesstimates. There's no accuracy in any of these values, and the best that you can is to get closer. But, but, but there's no, again, there's no uh, uh, guarantee that the market impact is going to be uh, what we have assumed it to be, as well as the slippage. Uh, commission calculations. Of course, uh, you can see the value here, by the way, is net 
of the transaction costs that we have accumulated over the course of the of the back test. So bottom line, we try our best to make it as truthful as possible, although in reality, it doesn't work exactly the way it's being simulated here. So just take that as basically more of a potential proof that there is predictive value to our forecaster, um, but the results may vary. Now, the question is, can we do better? I mean, this is pretty impressive as it is, but my question is, how do we even further enhance the predictability of this model? What can we do to actually uh, maybe more specify a, a specific mean by which we can identify a multi-layered forecasting that we just don't forecast the S&P 500 as a whole, but maybe go after a more refined research list of our own or allow some other factors to be utilized for um, identifying a qualified list on which we will forecast as opposed to the entire market. So here is what, this is the inspiration of the strategy, and I'm going to show you what, uh, what we've done here. So the question is, can we improve the efficacy of our forecaster with a qualified scan-based equity basket? Can we scan for the best of the S&P and then further improve the forecast results by matching indicator set that correspond to the scan definition. Essentially, rather than going through this genetic algorithm that we do every weekend and we get a very strong, compelling set of indicators that is suitable for the entire S&P 500, can we refine the indicators uh, based on the results of the equity scan, based on the results of the qualified list? So it's a more honed in approach to identifying indicators. And the answer is yes, we can. Our back tests, again, our research had proven to us that if we take that approach by which we either do our own research, our own sentiment towards a particular stock, whether it's a fundamental back of the envelope research that gives us a set of qualified securities, and then we further forecast the best out of that qualified list using indicator set that is specifically designed for that quality, quality list, uh, we can improve the results. So Tiebreaker is an actively managed, long, short, market-neutral strategy that takes advantage of multi-layered approach to picking long and short positions. Okay, so can we do better? So how about we do the following? Pick a good bullish scan. Look for momentum indicators and scan for upwards momentum uh, for the bullish qualified list, and then pick a compatible indicator set for that list, and then backtest a forecasting of, of that uh, long leg of our portfolio. At the same time, on the opposite leg, uh, the short leg, let's pick a good bearish scan and pick a compatible indicator set that's more suitable for that bearish, uh, I guess, uh, qualified list. And uh, again, backtest a short forecasting on that qualified list. And of course, uh, combine both of them as a long short strategy by optimizing the, the top you know, positions and the, and the best short positions to a beta neutral strategy. And I'm gonna talk about beta neutrality in a second. Um, you know, there are many ways to uh, pick a market neutral strategy. You can do it as a cash neutral. You push, take the cash and put half for the long position, the other half for the short position. Uh, we actually are impl employing something a little bit more sophisticated by which we combine our, our, our optimizer for a beta neutral strategy on the long and short positions. Okay, so this is a, an image of our scan screen. This is not what the strategy is actually using, but I'm just showing you how um, you know anyone, you don't have to be a mathematician, uh, to identify, define, and create these type of strategies by using our GUI interface. This is basically the ability to pick up, um, you know, various level of, of various, I guess, set of indicators, add them to the scan definition, and identify, um, I guess, a bullish scan. So here's an example looking for a price change, a price momentum to the upside between 50 basis points to 4%. I'm using uh, a fundamental indicator called uh, a Greenblatt. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Joel Greenblatt. It's a fundamental based uh, um, factoring of, of the health uh, of a business from, from again, fundamental and uh, performance perspective. So we use uh, 
a fundamental set of indicators here. And uh, we use a uh, Ballinger uh, bottom indicator. Essentially, this scan looks for mean reversion. So a crossing of the Ballinger bottom band with the price move to the upside for healthy companies. This is just an example of a bullish scan. Now, here's the question. How do we know if this scan is really good? Does it really provide any predictive value? It just shows you today what stocks represent this, these conditions. Now, for that, we have employed a very interesting module called the event study. And what is an event study? Essentially, event study is taking that scan or any scan and running it not today, but running it over a prolonged time period in the past. Essentially, take, take that very scan and run it every day between January 1st, 2011 and, let's say, December 31st, 2013, and then identify which stocks in every day made the scan, actually came back from the scan, and then assess how these stocks behaved one day to 20 days or one day to one month thereafter. That's what the event study really is, and we have talked about it in the past in other webinars, and I know that in the future, Tucker is going to present a very interesting and fascinating strategy called Gold Digger, which we will, uh, we will leave for a future webinar. But essentially, the, 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 the event scanner allows you to identify the efficacy or how effective an event is. So here's an example of an event study out, output. It provides a, a graphical depiction. The, the vertical line here represents the day of the event. Again, going back between January 1st, 2011 and December 31st, 2013, and creating these conditions that you are trying to identify what happened to the stock that made, made the cut, that passed that scan from one day, five days to 20 days thereafter. And you can see the behavior of the mean line before the event date. You can see that mean reversion, that's the Bollinger crossing with a one day upwards trajectory of the price. And this is the mean line that represents basically the average behavior of the stock universe that made the scan. The top and the bottom lines here represent the first standard deviation of all the potential outputs. So again, a narrow bounds here would give you a higher degree of confidence. And again, we see clearly that there is definitely a bias on the mean line to the upside. So that shows you that the scan has been predictive and has been effective to predict future behavior historically. That gives us some kind of an assurance that the scan that we're gonna be using does have some long predictive capabilities. And uh, when we conduct a back test, and again, this is all simulation, and we've taken basically the approach saying, okay, let's just scan between January 1st, 2013 and uh, May or, or June and July 2014, let's scan and forecast the result of the scan and just basically hold on to these positions uh, week by week with a one month look back. And you can see the results are very compelling. This is the S&P total return and our strategy on the long side only, this is the long side only, shows a pretty nice upwards trajectory. You can see here on the bottom, some of the uh, transaction cost analysis, uh, as well as what percentage of our transactions have been successful. You can see the results compared between the S&P total return and our strategy. So again, this is just uh, another, I guess, validation that taking the approach of forecasting a qualified list does provide predictive value, okay? Uh, now I'm going to go to the bearish side. So again, looking for short positions is a little bit more challenging, not uh, mechanically using the system, but it's just hard to find short positions. As you know, I've been uh, talking about that in my weekly newsletter. Uh, it's just uh, very tough to find uh, qualified short positions. But think about, again, a bearish scan, taking the same approach by identifying multiple indicators that has a, a bearish trajectory, price move to the downside. Uh, high P.E. ratio, which means they are riskier assets, not necessarily bad stocks, but just riskier assets. The green blatt here is used uh, to identify less strong positions or weaker type of uh, uh, securities based on the fundamental, um, I guess, analysis. Anything over 50 is the 
uh, I would say, weaker uh, part of the S&P or the Russell 1000. A low number is better than, than a large number. Uh, of course, looking at the stochastics and Bollinger Bottom, again, to the downside, as well as uh, Arun, another technical indicator that is price volume based. So you can see that we actually are mixing multiple types of indicators into any scan, and that's what our system provides. We have uh, lots of fundamental indicators, uh, economic macro indicators, as well as, uh, of course, uh, technical indicators. Now, again, how do we know that this is a good scan that can predict a, a bearish move or a down trajectory? Uh, we can do the same thing as with the long leg, apply essentially a, an event study to see if uh, I have, uh, you know, went back in time between, again, this is, by the way, January 1st, 2010, and December 31, 2010, totally arbitrarily picked up an out of sample uh, date range and essentially uh, looked at what happened to the stocks that matched the scan, that came back from the scan uh, one day and 20 days thereafter. You can see that this one actually has the mean line going down below the zero line, and it's got a mean reversion from going up to going back to the bottom. So essentially uh, looking at mean reversion to the downside. And uh, again, the event study shows that on the average from the stock universe that came back, there's 210 events that came back during this time frame, 123 equities. Some of them came back multiple times. That's why you have an, an unequal uh, number here. Um, you can see exactly how the uh, result of the event scan uh, identified short positions historically. So that's that's also fairly promising that we can identify, at least uh, through the scan, a potential short opportunity. And this test here, this is another back test. You can see it's not as smooth of a line as the previous long back test, but it does show a very compelling simulation that uh, indicates predictive short opportunity. Let me explain what you're seeing here. So first of all, the benchmark is not the S&P anymore. This is basically SH, which is basically the uh, short ETF of the S&P 500, right? And uh, we were trying actually to beat the short ETF just because we are market neutral strategy. We want to just basically beat the market and beat the short uh, of the market if we go, we go um, with a short position. So not only that we have beat the short ETF, we actually were able to con conclude through shorting these, these stocks, a pretty interesting and nice total return. We have a positive return of 116% compared to 46.43% uh, on the negative side on the, on the SH for the same time period. Uh, what's interesting about it is that you can see that it's not always very predictive. You can see here, for example, if I was shorting some stocks at this level, and went down about 25%, which is the max drawdown you can see here on the strategy, I probably would not be a happy camper. You know, nowadays that I'm looking back at history, I can be uh, a little bit more educated, but obviously this is not as smooth and as predictive. But what's important here, it's actually better than shorting the market as a whole. So in general, we can outperform shorting the market by indicating our short positions and taking um, taking uh, them as a as a as a short leg for our strategy. You can see here, by the way, year after year, how we have outperformed the SH uh, consistently through the strategy. Uh, one thing that I don't have here, and it's actually important to note, there's no transaction cost. Um, many of the stocks, uh, as you know, obviously are may not be shortable, uh, may not be hard, hard to borrow stocks. You have to account for borrowing costs. Uh, we didn't know exactly how to compile that. And again, the goal here is not to try and really identify the total return, just to show if there is any value, any predictive value in shorting the uh, bearish scan uh, stocks and, uh, and forecasting uh, lower the um, the, the list that was qualified from the scan for short positions. Okay. Okay, so we have the long leg, we have the short leg. How do we create beta neutrality? So again, 
the idea is is to try and identify a a way to weight the allocation between the long and the short leg, not just, not just by cash, by the volatility or the relative volatility to the market, because we are going really long against the market and short against the market. And we actually provide a very interesting and nice mean to do that. There are three ways by which you can optimize their portfolio. You can use historical price averages, which is what normal tools that uh, provide uh, um, you know, a mean variance optimization technology uh, provide. So going back historically, looking at the price averages, looking at the beta between the stocks, and uh, basically creating allocation for a given risk profile. We've added two more potential ways to optimize. The first one, which I'm not describing here, is optimizing based on the forecasted um, value of the stocks using our forecasters, our forecaster capabilities. So you forecast first, you look at what the uh, portfolio would look like in the near future, and then you optimize to that as opposed to based on historical price, uh, price averages. The third option, which is what I'm using here, is using a sentiment, my own sentiment. This basically allows you as a as a um, user of the system to apply your own research, your own sentiment towards any of these positions and uh, provide a forecast of your own of what you think the price trajectory or price moves are going to be for the next month or so. So what I've done here, I've taken the approach of sentiment-based optimization with identifying four positions with plus 2% and the other four positions with minus 2%. When I optimize, the, by the way, you see that min and max, you can even further hone in on a more refined strategy by putting a min max values for each position to, to allow the, the software to really uh, smooth out the allocation between the positions as opposed to weigh too heavily towards one position versus the other. So it just gives you more diversification capability here. But in essence, when I do that and I provide the optimization, you can see the before and after. The before is primarily a long-driven, a long-only driven uh, trajectory of the sample portfolio I'm just demoing here. When I optimize for beta neutral, I get a fairly flat line, which is kind of deceiving because I'm really trying to maximize my profit. But what it tells me is what it tells me that it's pretty well balanced between the long and short positions. And if my forecast theory is accurate. I'm going to be able to leverage the long leg to make market neutral, market uh, relative return to the opposite, to, to the positive side, and the short leg would give me a market relative return to the to the short side, to the negative side. So that, in theory, would not result in this type of forecast. It just smooths out the line for beta neutral allocation on this portfolio. So this is pretty much the entire uh, process. Uh, we go through that uh, through every rebalancing period, and uh, essentially we do it uh, on a weekly basis. Um, we provide, of course, exit uh, protections for stop loss in case uh, one stock just runs away from us. We put a four percent, for example, stop loss on on any of the positions, and uh, we basically replace any type of uh, early exits with an. E equal allocation of the SPY or SH, depending on if it's a long or a short position. Okay, uh, This is the result of a combined backtest of the long and short positions um, by which we, again, uh, taken a weekly rebalancing period. The purple, again, represents the S&P for that time frame, which, by the way, starts at January um, 2011 and all the way down to present time. You can see uh, a much stronger sharp ratio, uh, a very nice Sortino ratio. The compound annual return stands at 31.45%. So again, from simulation perspective, it's a very promising and strong strategy. Uh, we've been uh, trading it uh, in forward uh, testing for the last uh, six weeks or so. It has not been performing great, but uh, it's not uncharacteristic to see uh, this portfolio kind of flats, you know, uh, a little flat during during bullish times, and then of course it just kicks into a higher gear when uh, the market starts to act um, more balanced, and you have uh, 
a stock picking opportunity, which is, by, by the way, very much the same as my weekly um, rebalance strategy that I'm, that I'm simulating every week in my uh, Sunday newsletter. Uh, just to kind of give you a summary of what the backtest uh, simulation is showing, uh, the S&P uh, stats for that time frame are lined up here, and tiebreaker is showing, of course, in simulation only, a very strong upwards trajectory. So it's exciting for us to see it. Uh, again, uh, we are uh, actively uh, trading it, again, in forward uh, trading uh, simulation, and uh, hope to have... Uh, you know, uh, more concrete results as uh, the weeks come uh, and go and uh, we have uh, stronger evidence of uh, the success of this uh, strategy. That's uh, pretty much it. I uh, want to allow you guys to ask questions if you have. Um, this is, by the way, uh, one of the few times that I uh, run some of those uh, webinars. Usually it's uh, my co-founder, uh, Dr. Tucker Balch, who uh, obviously is much more um, uh, attuned to the uh, technology behind behind the uh, the software itself. However, just to show you, we can uh, allow anyone with uh, without uh, having a heavy math background to take advantage of our technology and build strategies, uh, really using our GUI and our web uh, interface of Quandesk. Okay. Um, so. Uh, uh, the first question was uh, if uh, we have been trading uh, uh, this uh, strategy live, and the answer is uh, yes, we have. You know, for for five weeks, as I said, uh, we are about uh, 80 basis points down uh, in the five weeks that we were trading it. It's, again, the market neutrality or the beta neutrality provides some sort of an assurance and safety uh, from major major moves. So it's a low volatility type of strategy. However, uh, it is uh, it is. Uh, uh, too early to tell how it's going to uh, to uh, turn out. Anything else? Okay, let me uh, quickly uh, give you a quick uh, overview uh, of how uh, it's done on Quandesk itself. Let me quickly bring the the uh, browser here, and we'll conclude our our. Uh, uh, session uh, right now. So just quickly to show you how a uh, strategy like that is simulated, just to show you how the optimization work. If I take in this uh, eight position sample portfolio, which is what you see on the screen here, let me expand the screen so you can see the entire screen. So if I'd like to optimize this specific portfolio, I have just a sample pick of eight positions, uh, nothing, nothing, uh, um, you know, that came from any list, just a sample list of, of securities. If I uh, essentially apply an optimization on this uh, specific portfolio, you can see I have three options here, historical average, uh, price forecaster, and uh, sentiment. If I use a historical average, which is basically the traditional approach for long short strategy, and uh, let's say I pick up uh, a long only portfolio because these are all long positions, and, and run the optimization, uh, the way the results would be manifested as, okay, uh, this is the before, uh, this is the after. You can see that uh, some of the weights that were equally uh, identified before have been shifted to uh, be heavier on one stock versus the other. You can see graphically uh, what we've accomplished here. Essentially, we were able to increase the sharp ratio uh, through this exercise uh, by simply applying optimization with a one-year look back, okay? Uh, by the way, you can see here an interesting new addition to our software, which is essentially the efficient frontier. That line indicates the risk return, uh, risk uh, return considerations for how do we allocate the various, uh, the various uh, positions to maximize the return for a given risk profile, right? So we have uh, risk levels that can go from zero most conservative to 10, which is most aggressive. And I'm gonna change it in a second to the aggressive so you can see how, how it all you know, sits on the uh, efficient frontier. And you can see the blue is the before, we are off the frontier and uh, the orange shows you the exact position to identify the most suitable allocation for maximizing your return for a moderate risk profile. 
if I, for example, selected a conservative approach and run the exact same optimization, nothing changed other than the risk profile. You can see that the after the orange dot here is now residing on the lower left side of the uh, of the risk return scatter chart, essentially uh, indicating a lower return, but obviously a lower risk as well. You can see here that we were able to improve the volatility of the of the portfolio. If I take a, a quick snapshot um, on the um, on the um, uh, screen here, you can see that we actually have had lower return, but the cone, which presents the volatility of the projected volatility of the portfolio, is much narrower, which kind of is in line with what this chart is showing you. Um, just to quickly uh, f finish the demo here, if I go to my sentiment, which is what I mentioned before, to create this market neutral strategy, you can see here how um, I can identify the plus 2% for the top four positions and minus two for the, for the best uh, short position, for the top uh, uh, four uh, short positions. And if I run the optimizer on this strategy, on this type of technology, you can see that it does gonna split uh, my portfolio. Oh, I'm sorry, I had a long only here. Make it long short, and it'll split my portfolio to be uh, long on the plus two uh, positions and short on the negative two positions. Again, the goal here is to flatten the line and create that market uh, beta neutrality on their portfolio. Okay, one question that came in just at the end. How does uh, this strategy differ from my weekly strategy? Uh, actually, the inspiration came from my weekly strategy. This is a little different because uh, we take uh, uh, the approach of, uh, we use the hedger to identify short positions. It's a, one of our other modules, which we are not uh, utilizing here in this demo. Um, we are using uh, you know, the event analyzer and the optimizer, uh, while my weekly strategy uses the hedger to identify uh, the short position. And actually, it is not beta neutral. It is uh, uh, more uh, uh, market neutral by identifying potentially all long positions if, uh, if the machine decides that the hedger should be composed of long positions only. Or sometimes we have only two or three long posi uh, short positions, and then we have five short positions. So again, a different approach to kind of achieving the same type of, uh, of uh, behavior. OK, this is. Uh, been fun. I appreciate your time and sticking around throughout the demo. If there's any questions at all that I can answer, um, you know, uh, outside of uh, this presentation, by all means, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Um, I see one more question that came in just now. Let me just quickly see if I have. Uh... Yes, uh, good question. Someone asked uh, about uh, simulating a uh, non-U.S. stock markets. Uh, so we are currently in the process of expanding the universe of stocks that we are supporting. We are U.S. only. We support up to uh, 17,000 securities, including ETFs, mutual funds, and of course, uh, the actual uh, uh, trading uh, traded uh, uh, equities in the market. Uh, we are going to expand to other regime, um, maybe fixed income, forex, and uh, commodities as well as international markets, uh, European market and the Asia Pacific uh, markets as well. So stay tuned, we'll have announcement for all of the above in the near future. Okay, thanks again everybody for your time. Um, I appreciate it and uh, enjoy the rest of, of the week. Take care. Mm -hmm.